In this example, I'm going to show you how to calculate the population variance and the population standard deviation. Um, now, we have a data set for the variable x, which is equal to 10, 12, 13, 15, and 15. Now, in this formula for the population variance, you notice I have it defined here, and the population standard deviation, and that's shown here. This formula may look a bit daunting at first, but what we're going to do is break this down into smaller steps, and I think you'll see, with a little bit of practice, that this really isn't that um, difficult to solve for. With a little bit of practice here, I think you'll be able to do it. So let's go ahead and do that. Notice here we have an x, and that's our variable x here. We also have an n, and that's equal to the number of um, values we have here, which is 5. Okay, so n is 5. The one thing we don't know here is mu, the population mean. So let's start by solving for that. So the population mean, I'm going to write that here, kind of small to save space, is equal to the sum of all of these values divided by the number of values are 5. So if we add these up and divide by 5, I'm going to write to the right here to save space. This is going to be equal to 22, 35, 50, 65 over 5, or 13. So the population mean is equal to 13. Now the reason why I know this is a population it's just because I've asserted that. In your own problems, when you're working in your text, you will see, it's either, it will state, um, solve, the, solve for the variance for the following um, values from a population. Or, alternatively, it may say, solve for the variance for the following sample of values. And in that case, you're dealing with a sample. Here we're dealing with a population, and in this, um, uh, video here, I'm only showing you how to solve for population variance and population standard deviation, not the sample variance and sample standard deviation. That will be for a later video. Okay, so let's go ahead and do solve for this now. What I want to do is um, create a column here of x. We're going to write down these values once again to help order our information. So we've, I'm rewriting the values for variable x. Okay, and next what I want to do is solve for this piece here, x minus mu. Okay, this is the next thing that we want to do. So I'll write a column, x minus mu. And I encourage you to do this on your own as you're watching this to make sure you can follow it. So our first x is 10. And what's our mean? We see that the mean is 13. So we have 10 minus 13, or negative 3. 12 minus the mean of 13, or negative 1. 13 minus 13, or 0. 15 minus 13, or positive 2. And we have that once again. 15 minus 13 is a positive 2. Now, one important thing to notice here, and to always check on your own when you're doing this, is to make sure that the sum of these values, when you add them all up, in other words, and these are, these are often thought of when you have how far away a score is from the mean, this is often thought of as a deviation score. Okay? How far each value for x deviates or departs from the mean. So a value of 10 deviates by 3 points below the mean since it's negative. A value of 12 deviates by 1 point below the mean, once again, because it's negative. 13 does not deviate at all away from the mean. Notice it's the exact same value as the mean. So this is 0. 15 is 2 points above the mean. 15, once again, is 2 points above the mean. So when we add these up, negative 3 plus a negative 1 is a negative 4 plus 0 is still a negative 4, and then we have 2 plus 2 is a positive 4. So when we have a negative 4 plus a positive 4, that is equal to 0. 
So down here, it's helpful as a check to make sure that these values equal zero. I just wrote the sum of this here, the sum of the deviation scores equals zero. Okay, so that's a helpful check. You always want to make sure when you're doing this, it's recommended anyway, that these values, in fact, sum up to zero. Okay, next, we've completed this part of our formula, x minus mu. Now, um, next we want to square each of those deviation scores. So here we're going to make a column, x minus mu squared. And then we'll just take these values, negative 3 squared equals 9, negative 1 squared equals 1, 0 squared equals 0, 2 squared equals 4, and 2 squared equals 4. Now what I've done there, once again, i squared the deviation scores. Okay, so I've done, I've, I've found the deviation scores, and now I've squared them, that's what these are. So all I have left for the numerator is to take the sum of those values, or in other words, to add them up. So let's go ahead and do that, and I'll write down the notation. The sum of x minus mu squared equals 9 plus 1 is 10, plus 0 is 10, plus 4 is 14, plus 4 is 18. So we have the sum of the squared deviation scores is equal to 18. All right, so I've got the numerator of each of these for each of these values. So we're almost done. Moving over here, the population variance is equal to 18 divided by n, which once again is 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have five values. And when I solve for that, the variance is equal to 3.6. Okay, the population variance is equal to 3.6. Now let's go ahead and solve for this population standard deviation. The population standard deviation is just equal to the square root of 3.6, or notice here, the population formula is just the square root of the variance. Okay, So you just take the square root of the variance, and that gives you the standard deviation. And pardon me here, there's a little bit of a mistake here. I see a little mistake. Let's get rid of that. This stands for the population standard deviation. So the population standard deviation is equal to the square root of 3.6, or we have with rounding the two decimal places, which is what we'll frequently do, you fr frequently round the two decimal places, it's 1.90. So, our two answers here, for the population variance, we have 3.6, and for the population standard deviation, we have 1.90.